smaller number. Um, we're just gonna let you know that the meeting is being recorded. That was a, uh, that just came on. And the reason we do that is so that people who have not been able to come tonight can listen to it later. So give them some information. And of course, if questions come up later after the meeting, you're welcome to send them in as well. But this is all about learning about what's, what's being proposed before a development actually goes um, and uh, goes through a, an approval process. So it's good for the, for the community to know what's going on um, in their neighborhood. Okay, so I'm going to uh, pass it on to Ferris. And Ferris uh, Azoba um, is with Canadian uh, General Contractors and he is the one who is looking at doing this development. And I'll let him introduce the other people here today. Again, thank you very much for coming. Um, just one thing, um, if you want to ask a question, you have two options. Um, you can raise your hand and ask in person or if you feel a little shy or prefer to write something out, you can use the chat function. Both are fine. Okay, over to you, Ferris. Thank you. Thank you uh, to Councillor Cavanaugh and, uh, and her team, uh, including Connie, for putting this together. Appreciate it. Uh, it's very important for us that we have this dialogue with the community. Um, you know, we very much so, uh, you know, we, we met with Councillor Cavanaugh, you know, probably a couple of months ago and we let her know that uh, we plan on getting as much feedback as possible to ensure that this pr process is as smooth as possible. You know, there's no such thing as a smooth construction project, but as long as we're taking all the feedback and, and getting everybody's kind of, um, um, uh, you know, feedback and we incorporate it, I think hopefully We'll, um, we'll have a successful project. So um, as Councillor Kavanaugh, Kavanaugh mentioned, I'm from uh, Canadian General Contractors Group. We, uh, we own you know, a series of construction companies and, um, and, and we also have a series of development projects in Ottawa and, and uh, nationally. And uh, we put together uh, a, a wonderful team, a team of all-stars to be able to make sure that we're we're building a project here that that's uh, you know abides by bylaw provisions and works with the city of Ottawa and also takes the community's feedback and and, and implements it into this project. So I've, I've teamed up with uh, the good folks at WSP, uh, a planning company that helps make sure that you know we're we're walking that tight line and that we're you know following all the rules. And so uh, we've got Nadia on the line here from WSP uh, and also Samantha. Um, did you guys want to? Kind of jump in there and give your quick two cents. Sure. Thanks, Ferris. And thank you, Councillor Cavanaugh. Good, good evening, everyone. My name is Nadia DeSanti. I am a practice lead here in Ottawa for our WSP company. Uh, I am a land use planner and uh, the project manager for this uh, planning um, exercise that uh, we are uh, hoping to undertake. And I'll turn it over to Samantha to introduce herself. All right, thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Samantha Gachny. I'm a planner working at WSP and I've been assisting Ferris and Nadia with this project and I'm looking forward to speaking to this project with you all tonight. Okay, with that, I think I'll go ahead and share my screen so that you can see our presentation that we've prepared tonight. Okay. Thanks, and while Samantha is pulling that up, our presentation will probably be about 15 minutes. Um, and, um, we are uh, happy to answer questions uh, following our presentation. So that's uh, just a photo of the existing um, uh, uh, house right now, which is, uh, which is vacant. Um, so from um, our presentation overview, which is on the next slide, I'm just going to um, just provide a quick overview on the site location, community context, as well as the policy overview. Um, Samantha is going to uh, speak to the development proposal and the zoning compliance and then overall project timeline at a, at a high level. So as I mentioned, um, the one story single detached uh, house is currently vacant. Um, there is some uh, trees and some vegetation um, on, mainly on the south side of the property. And in context with the neighborhood and um, the uh, surrounding area. Uh, the site is located in the Michelle Heights uh, neighborhood, which is consists primarily of low, uh, medium and high density residential uses. 
there are a variety of commercial uses in the vicinity of the site uh, immediately abutting the, the northern property line and, um, and along the south side of Carling, which is all uh, north of the site. And as well, uh, Carling Avenue has a, a wide range of uses, including retail, um, restaurants, uh, Cineplex, um, and of course, we also have uh, Michelle Park, which is to the east, um, to the east of the property, and a little bit to the south, which you'll see in the next slide. And there's also a community center, Judge Park, and Bayshore Park in the area. The site, from an official plan perspective, so the official plan is the guiding land use policy document. Uh, for the city um, is illustrated here. So the site is designated as Arterial Main Street and the city zoning bylaw, which implements the official plan is um, illustrated here. So the site, which is um, illustrated by the star uh, is zoned Arterial Main Street. So that's AM with an urban exception which is the number 2181. So the 2181 is the exception in the square brackets. And the um, height is 11 meters and that's represented by the H and in brackets 11. The um, arterial main street zone permits the proposed use, which is a low rise apartment. And sites to the north and to the west of the site are zoned arterial main street, subzone 10. And the sites to the southwest are zoned residential first density, zone subzone GG. And Michelle Park, which is to the east and to the south of the site, is zoned community leisure facility zone. So I'm going to pass it over to Samantha to present the next few slides. All right, thank you so much, Nadia. So as Nadia mentioned, I'll be speaking to the proposed development. So the development consists of a four story low rise apartment building with 20 residential units. The units will range in size from studios to two bedroom units and are proposed to be rental in nature. The existing detached house and shed on the property would be demolished in order to enable construction of the, pro of the development. A total of 15 vehicle parking spaces are proposed. The parking spaces would be located at the rear of the property, so abutting Michelle Park, and would access to the parking lot would be provided off of Rosedrew Avenue. In addition to the vehicle parking spaces, 14 bicycle parking spaces would be provided. These bicycle parking spaces are proposed to be located inside the apartment building on, in the basement level on, in an interior storage room. In it, the development is also proposed to have a rooftop patio that would be approximately 180 square meters in size and it would be accessed via a rooftop staircase and that would be used by residents. A shared balcony is also proposed on the fourth story of the building and that would also be shared among residents. Landscape buffers are proposed along the edges of the sites and as part of the proposed development the Canadian General Contractors is proposing to have six affordable units. These affordable units would be provided in partnership with Operation Come Home. Operation Come Home is a local nonprofit charity that works with homeless youth and adults to provide housing, employment, and educational services. Okay, and moving on. So this is the proposed site plan right now. So this site plan is subject to change prior to formal submission to the city. What you see outlined in that red box, that is a current City of Ottawa stormwater pipe easement. So that's just along the southern edge and that will be retained. So as you, and you can see the building which is outlined, the building footprint is outlined in gray and the building is located on the northwestern part of the property and that has been strategically done in order to maximize the distance between the development and the existing residential uses to the south. Uh, so and the building uh, footprint enables a max the distance between those the properties to the south to be maximized. It's approximately seven and a half meters from the building footprint to the southern property line. And as you can see, the rear parking lot at the back abuts the Michelle Park, which has it, that's the basketball courts located in Michelle Park. So moving on, this is the proposed architectural rendering currently for the development. 
So as you can see, the permitted the at the top of the building, there's a block projecting. So that is the staircase to the rooftop patio, and that's a permitted projection that is enabled by as allowed by the City of Ottawa zoning bylaw. You can see that a mix of materials are proposed for the buildings outside windows, brick and stone, which will add dimension and interest to the street. The buildings that are behind the building, that is not part of the proposed development. That is just a, a concept and that does not form any real development applications that are in place. I just want to preface that. Okay, so moving on, the development in order to occur, a minor zoning bylaw amendment application is required. Minor zoning bylaw amendments are, may, are proposed when a development does not meet all of the standards of the zoning bylaw, which is the case here. And I'm going to be speaking to each of these requests that are being, that will be made as part of our zoning bylaw amendment application. So the first of it being the maximum building height. So the zoning bylaw permits a maximum building height of 11 meters, whereas the development is proposed to have a height of 14.32 meters. This building height is in order to accommodate the design of the building and the layout of the units. Moving on, our second and third requests have to deal with reductions to the minimum required resident vehicle parking spaces as well as the minimum visitor parking spaces. So whereas the zoning bylaw requires a total of 24 resident parking spaces, we are proposed to provide 15 and a total of four visitor parking spaces are required, whereas the de proposed development would pr provide zero visitor parking spaces. The rationale being due to the site's proximity to neighborhood amenities, as Nadia spoke to earlier, as well as the public transit along Carling Avenue, so the 85 bus route that runs, we believe that these traffic uh, impacts will be mitigated, but we will also be able to speak to any questions you have that in the Q&A section. So moving on, the fourth request that we are asking, for, uh, we will be making our application is in terms of the minimum distance permitted between the a projection and a side lot line. So on the northern north side of the property, there are proposed balconies for the units and the zoning bylaw requires a minimum distance of 0 0.6 meters between a permitted projection. So in this case, it's a balcony overhang and a property line. What our devel the development is currently proposing is 0 0.4 meters between the balcony overhang and the property line. And then finally, the request is being made to reduce the minimum parking lot buffer width. So this is only for the south landscape buffer located uh, between the parking lot and the southern property line. A minimum distance of 1.5 meters is required, whereas we are proposing 0 0.78 meters. It is worth noting that this is just the distance between the edge of the parking lot and the southern property line. The distance between the actual building itself and the southern property line will be 7.52 meters. Okay, and with that, I'm going to let Nadia speak to the project timeline. Thanks, Samantha. So, um, as uh, Councillor Kavanaugh mentioned, um, we are here tonight to um, to hear any comments uh, the community um, residents have. We're hoping to submit our, um, our site plan at control application and the minor zoning bylaw amendment application in August through the fall to uh, winter, I can't believe I'm saying winter, but winter 2022. Um, we're hoping that we'll have a, the city will conduct their um, technical and public review process and um, ultimately have a, a decision um, on those applications. So we are, uh, we want to thank you again for participating tonight and we are happy to answer uh, questions that you may have. I'll turn it back to the counselor. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, Nadia. Um, that was a, a great presentation. Um, if no one has any questions right away, and you know, uh, just think about it a little bit, uh, I'm going to ask a question. And um, I was kind of surprised when you said those zero uh, visitor parking, and you said it's because there's amenities nearby. Now you're next door to a Tim Hortons. Are you planning to have people park in the Tim Hortons parking lot? 
Um, what is that? Uh, because that's very unusual to have zero visitors parking. And um, why not uh, take some of the parking that you were going to give to residents if uh, perhaps there is, because, it, because of the fact that you're near transit, residents would know that they can't have a car there. So, but um, how does somebody deliver a pizza or do something like that if there's no visitors parking? Ayers, do you want to take that uh, question? Yeah, sure thing. So, um, you know, when, when coming up with the, the feasibility of this project um, in, in, in order to meet certain criteria, um, we had to have at least 20 units in this building. Now, with the number of parking spots that we had available, we decided to give the 15 parking spots to the actual residents of the building. And we thought that, you know, the, the five or six that won't have parking spots would mostly be made up of the demographic of those needing affordable housing and thus not necessarily needing parking spots. Now that brings up the question of, well, you know, how, how do we get visitor parking, you know, on this development? And we're going to have to essentially try to explore various different options to try to figure out that question that you presented. So, I mean, you know, at the beginning of a project like this, nothing's ever 100% in concrete and we're still working on certain items and, and trying to accommodate visitor parking is something that we, we're gonna try to look into, whether it's, you know, potentially having to give up an extra space or whether it's finding other means. But um, at this point, we're still exploring various different um, options for visitor parking. Can you ask questions now? Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Hi. Go ahead, Brian. So as, as a resident of Roseview, have you guys actually been in the area and seen the demographics and knowing that the infrastructure will not sustain having a 20, another 20 unit uh, low income affordable housing unit? Because right now we're already uh, fighting with issues with Michelle Street where they put uh, more affordable low income housing there with no parking. So they park on the street. So people from your Roseview have a hard time actually getting on to or trying to get up to Richmond through Michelle because during the winter time it's it's not feasible because people are all over the place on the road. Secondly, trying to get onto Carling, turning left, um, it's almost impossible in the morning trying to get through. So you adding 20 more units uh, is gonna make it very hard for people to be in this area. And another thing too is, I think what we should look at is, I mean, we're not trying to take away from trying to put affordable housing or that, but I think it should be done where they actually start using the demographics of Ottawa and start using different areas instead of just using this area, because they seem to congregate in this area. And when you put something like this in the area where no one actually owns the unit, well, the other residents that actually own properties around here are paying for it because people that don't own units are uh, very carefree and they don't care about the properties around. And basically we have to deal with garbage. We have to deal with looking at people's premises that are not being maintained. There's a lot of things that haven't been looked at trying to bring another affordable housing into this area where we already have too much. Yeah, th those are very fair uh, comments. Um, you know, to, um, you asked if I'm very familiar with the neighborhood. I'm, I actually grew up, um, you know, off of Carling, a little bit west of Roseview. Um, very familiar with the different pockets of, of um, you know, I guess I'm not sure the politically correct term, if it's uh, subsidized housing in, in the various, you know, regions around there. So uh, I can completely understand your concerns. I, the first being uh, what was sounded like a security issue. So what we're doing with uh, the development of this building is we're uh, including video telecom um, uh, system that provides digital keys for those going in and out and accessing the elevators. So we'll be able to uh, have a good insight into how many people are coming in and out of the building. And furthermore, um, regarding uh, the security of the building, uh, and the affordable housing component, it's important to note that six out of the 20 units will be affordable housing. And we've teamed up with Operation Come Home, who essentially will be helping with the property management 
uh, of those tenants. So if those tenants are causing a concern or an issue within the community, Operation Come Home will get involved and you know, we'll have you know, pretty close to zero um, tolerance kind of policy in regards to how these tenants are, are conducting themselves and how it's impacting the community. Um, you know, obviously with a newer development, we have even more incentive to ensure that the property is being respected and in turn, hopefully that, that gets passed on to the community as well. So, um, you know, regarding, regarding uh, the, the impact of having an additional 20 units within this location, we're exploring um, various feasibility studies that's part of the site plan control process to essentially understand um, the impacts of this development, um, you know, in the community from everything from parking to lighting to greenery. And um, we're, we're ensuring that we're following you know, the bylaw provisions that are set out to, to ensure that we're not compromising the community because of this bill. Okay, well, you didn't, you, you didn't really answer the question of yeah, like, sorry, infrastructure. Brian, can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Wayne, sorry, I apologize. I'm, I haven't used this system before. But what Brian's trying to get at is the corner of where Carling meets Richmond Road, okay? There's a Tim Hortons there, the, which is very busy during rush hour in the first thing in the morning and in, in the evening, okay? We're going, it's difficult enough, like he said, to make a left-hand turn. And it's the only place in this area where you can make a left-hand turn onto Carling Avenue. I work in Canada every morning. It hasn't been that bad right now because of the COVID going on. But when COVID was going on, you had to be the most aggressive driver to make that turn in the in the morning. And on top of it, we have the uh, what's the what used to be the Bayshore Hotel. It's now called the uh, the Carling Family Shelter. There, they have school bus after school bus that pulls up there in the morning and in the evening, and they stop. Everyone's trying to get out of Tim Hortons or into Tim Hortons. And then if you want to make a left-hand turn, I'm surprised there's not a lot more accidents there than there is right now. So I agree with Brian in the sense is you're going to add 20 more units to the street, okay? The street, give or take two houses, makes up 30 houses. If you add 20 more units, that's a, mm, let me do the math, 65, 60% increase in the amount of people who are living on this street. And we have, we don't have the infrastructure for, uh, for the, for that right now. We don't have sidewalks. One of the big things is, is this is a very pedestrian street. It links Richmond Road down to Carling Avenue. We have a lot of cyclists, bicyclists who come down the street with no but, sidewalks. Yeah, okay. But it, it links it only by, by cycle, by cycle. Yeah, yeah, but I'm talking about the pedestrians, the not pedestrians not with no sidewalks yeah. on the street. What's going to happen is they have no visitor parking. They don't have enough parking for the uh, units they have. It's going to end up being parking on the street. In the winter time, the snow plow comes. People parking on the street screws up the street and it's hard to walk down the street when the street gets all messed up. But there's no parking on the street. There's no parking signs. Uh, oh, there's no parking no. signs on not... one side of the street. On the other side of the street, oh. it's parking. Okay, I'm looking at uh, Geo Ottawa because I couldn't remember myself. I only live down the street from you, by the way. <laughs> so I'm, I'm very familiar with the street, but I couldn't remember the signs. And I'm looking at it and so I see... One, uh, one side, only one side has uh, parking. The other side has no parking. And what Wayne's trying to say is... Right I now, see no right. parking on both sides. No, there's only no. no parking on one side. Okay, I see the signs on both sides. No, it's only maybe, on one. Maybe in okay. some areas of the street, but not not in most. Um, but my concern as well is the the lack of parking, not just visitor, but residents uh, as well. It, it's uh, um, okay. It's up to uh, Michelle. Um, it's no parking on both sides. So okay. then all the parking, all the all the street parking will go on past Michelle blocking an already congested area that people drive at 100 kilometers an hour down that down our street. Yeah, my concern is also that is that there will be more congestion caused by, um, you know, it's really nice to think that it's accessible and that people will take public transportation. And I really wish that that was the reality. Unfortunately, I know that it isn't. 
Um, and I think that the reality is that we'll end up with more on-street parking and there will be less room for the people who like to enjoy walking and cycling to be able to do so safely. Um, okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, we, we can look at those issues. Um, I just want to know, Nadia, when you reached out to the city, has um, I don't know, are you, have you been assigned a planner for this project? Yeah. Uh, yes, and um, Ferris had the... Uh, pre-application uh, consultation meeting with the city um, and then uh, we were retained <laughs> after that so we weren't part of that um, initial meeting but we have the meeting minutes and um, yes. I mean the these are um, comments that you know we can take away and and look at as mm -hmm. Ferris said there's other you know look at other potential options um, and so that's you know part of the um, part of the reason we're having we're having this meeting um mm -hmm. and i uh usually usually the city planner who um uh organized the pre-application consultation meeting sometimes those planners continue on with the files sometimes it might be assigned due to mm -hmm. the workload so um uh, you know, we don't have that confirmation yet. We haven't submitted any applications okay. yet. Yeah. Okay. But the pre app the meeting has been held. Okay. Thank you. And um, the reason I'm asking is because usually um, uh, it's it's up to the developers to to look at the transportation issues if there are any that arise. But um, uh, it, we can also look at it just from in terms of any concerns. Um, I'm very familiar with Roseview. Um, it's part of my running route. So I, I go up and down it all the time. So I know how it is to walk on it. Um, it's uh, generally, um, there are there is some traffic turning off of Michelle um, and, and Penny, but uh, uh, it's not, it, it depends on the time of day. But um, I believe Mary, did Mary, did you have your, would you want it was? Yeah, I, ju I just wanted to add a comment about the parking as well. I live at the West End of Penny. Mm -hmm. And we have no sidewalks as well. And I can honestly say, I don't understand why putting 20 units in that there's only going to be 15 spaces allowed for the units when I can tell you for sure that the subsidized housing beside us, um, the, the overflow coming out of there because people have multiple vehicles. Um, we know of certain residents that have three and four vehicles so what's to say that these the individuals or families that are going to be moving into these 20 units aren't going to have one, two, potentially three cars. So again, it, it's just adding to the congestion. And, uh, you know, again, particularly in the winter, we have witnessed the snow plows having issues coming around our corner. And when there's overload of extra parking on this street, which we actually had no parking, it was both sides, we had no parking put in on one side um, when there's over congestion here they start parking down Roseview and trying to watch a delivery truck or snow plows or such get around the corner or like either up Roseview or down Roseview um, is horrible and it's it's the same turning on to Michelle where it's congested and then turning off from Michelle onto Grennan you sometimes you can't see because of all the traffic or all the the parked cars so I, I'm a little concerned as everybody said about the the more parking or, or potentially more parking issues worse than we already have now yeah and that's something that um we can work on with the community directly like my office if that's a concern like if if the street wants to limit parking we can do a petition process and and uh and uh and limit parking further if that is if that if that's uh, sorry i i don't mean to sorry mary i don't mean to interrupt but uh i think well i know one of the issues where you're at they put in they took away the visitor parking for free on michelle and now you have to pay by an app where people used to park there their second vehicle and stuff there overnight and now that you'd get ticketed if you're there or you have to pay by an app they flooded over on your street and now that there's no parking signs in front of uh, your house they're starting to flood over onto uh under roseview it's like we're pushing the we're pushing the issue onto the next street 
over constantly, constantly. Yeah, and like you said, yeah. And like you said, is it is difficult when it snows and there's cars on the street and then the cars, the plow, snow plow can't do a good job of the street. And because mm -hmm. there's no sidewalks, it makes it more difficult for people to walk on or to get around. It's dangerous even in the summer just because of the speed that the cars drive around here, first of all. And then you add in the icy, snowy weather and the, the narrower streets. Um, it, it, it's ridiculous. It's because Roseview is a big straightaway and you yes. get, you get young people in cars. They tend to drive quickly and there's nothing to slow them down like a, a stop oh. sign at Michelle or a speed bump or anything like that. Oh, there's no. not even, I don't even think there's a, a speed limit sign on, on Roseview. Uh, yeah. No, but there, but it's not only Roseview because just as soon as they turn the corner and they head from the corner down into the subsidized housing, they speed until they get to the speed bump and then they slow right down. Anyways, Teresa. We can look at uh, traffic calming measures. I'm working on, on that with all kinds of communities across the, the ward. Well, our, uh, our big issue right now is not the traffic calming. It's not to increase traffic or increase parking on the street. That's our, our biggest concern. Yeah, my so are you, you concern. want to limit parking? Well, not, parking? I don't want to limit parking. Like I want to be able to uh, like park in front of my house or if I have, have people coming, but I don't want someone using the street as their permanent parking. Yeah. Like, I, would, I want everyone to be able to use the street. Yeah. Like if people have a company and stuff, but if this becomes where this is where their people are parking. And if you're putting 20 units into one little area, think of how congested the, if you can park on the street in that area at that bad intersection. One of the issues is if um, it's reporting parking, if people are parking o over the time limit, is is ticketing with bylaw they and don't do a good sending job. it into three one one, which was difficult during the pandemic. I'll I'll be upfront with you. That was a problem during the pandemic because they couldn't do deal with it then. But we're getting back to normal as normal as we can be, um, where um, you can report people parking too long and they'll get ticketed. So, yeah, but I, I've, hey, actually witnessed, I've witnessed cars on Michelle Park there with five tickets on their windshield and they could care less. They just, they walk up to the cars and throw their tickets down. It's just, it's, they, they could care less. So. I, I think that fundamentally the issue is that if we're putting in 20 units, there needs to be adequate parking provided for those units. Um, and I, Unfortunately, you know, I wish we lived in a world where people were commuting more and biking and walking, but I know that that's not the reality. So, you know, the reality that we're going to face as the residents on this street, um, especially as the ones after Michelle, where there is parking allowed on our side, is that we're, we're going to have people parking there because people have cars. And that's, yeah, that's just and, it. And, and that is, and, and in front of your house is public space. So unless there's a rule that says no parking or restricted parking in the winter or whatever, um, anyone can park there. I can't. Of course, can't, and that, that's not, that's not at all my issue. People, just that's so you're not all my issue. My my concern is just having a space with with twenty units and not even providing one spot per unit. Yeah. Just so you know, um, uh, and I'll let Ferris speak. I'm sorry, Ms. Ferris. Um, I've been dealing with a lot of development issues and um, it's actually the trend to provide less parking. One of the reasons is, is, is space reasons, but also because they're the, and the city um, will not turn down applications that have less parking and the, because they want to encourage people not to own cars. And one of the ways that um, that can be dealt with is encouraging share uh, car services, that kind of thing, so that people don't feel they have to own a car. That, that, uh, that's one of the things we could hope to encourage. But um, overall, um, a lot of the big applications, this is very, very small, mm -hmm. but uh, you're talking 20 units. I'm t uh, I've got some that are 550 mm -hmm. and the parking ratio is about 50%. That is only half the units will get a parking spot. And have you seen, have you seen yeah. work out where people have like 
has there been an effect um, on the rest of the community in terms of parking or have you seen it actually work out where people are yeah. not owning cars or not having cars? Like what's, what's happened that, that's, in real time? It, it, it's, it's, well, I haven't had them built yet. They're, those are the applications. But across the city, um, I can talk to my colleagues who have had those buildings. Yeah, that would be great. To yeah, know and um, generally speaking, if you're going into a place and it says you don't get a parking spot, and there is no parking spot, you better not own a car. And you've got a bus stop right uh, one step away from your, your place. You're going to have to um, know that and go in eyes wide open. And um, you're not being very realistic if you have a car and you have a place that has no parking. Um, that's the reality. That's the reality that people have to face. Otherwise, they better find someplace else. Yeah, and uh, been or, dealt or with. for the parking because that's usually an extra cost I, i'm also so, concerned though that, that the units that won't get parking spots will be the units that are the affordable housing units so the people who maybe didn't really have a choice of what location they get to live in maybe need to have a car for uh for work to make money to to improve their situation is yeah, that you these are these are all great points, um, and, and I have some valuable insight. Hopefully, sorry, that's why I'm kind of just butting in here. So uh, you go easy. for it. Um, so you know, uh, I want you guys to know that parking has been top of mind for us as well too. I mean, just even from a development perspective, um, renting out uh, units is easier when it comes with a parking spot. So we want more parking space. That's that's for sure. Now regarding um, you know, that being said, Nadia and Samantha and, and, you know, the rest of the team here, including myself, uh, have been discussing various options that's just not necessarily concrete yet. So some of them being potentially leasing out um, space from the, the building in front of us and the Tim Hortons potentially for an extra one or two spaces, if that's a possibility. Uh, I mean, I know you guys know the building directly uh, in front of 817 Roseview, basically, um, west of it the blue building i know that their parking lot seems like it's almost always empty um or maybe it's just whenever i drive by there so that could be a potential option another option as well is um, dedicating a parking spot for uh ride sharing companies like a commune auto where you can essentially have like a, a car sharing pool for a specific amount of units and they sign they sign out the, the car as needed so those are the two various options that, that have kind of been discussed in our initial meetings and we look to explore it more as, as the, uh, the application goes through. But apart from that, you know, Councillor Cavanaugh kind of touched on it. Um, all the leases will come with a parking spot if a dedicated parking spot is attached to it. If, there, if you do not have a parking spot, then you cannot have a car and, and it will be in the lease agreements. Now, specifically with the master lease agreement that we're gonna have with Operation Come Home, right? So the way it works is Operation Come Home uh, will end up having a master lease agreement with us and we'll incorporate in there that they must choose tenants that do not have cars because there will not be a parking spot allocated to them. Now, that being said, that's roughly about six units out of the 20. So technically we should have uh, 14 tenants that have cars. So maybe it's a potential opportunity for us to open up uh, one out of the 15 to be a visitor parking spot as well. But with this building in general, I know with the parking spots, and sorry to jump in, is that you're changing the, I understand you, people don't want, you don't want people to have cars and city of Ottawa, but this building's changing the fabric of the street. OK, it's single homes and now you're throwing in a 20 unit at the end of the home without enough parking spot for it. So it's kind of like I could see, you know, OK, we're going to take that one big lot and we're going to put three houses on it. I could see, OK, I can see them doing that. It's a big lot. But to just jump in and put 20 units with not enough parking spots, it comes off as that we're going to take this piece of property and we're going to put engineers on it and we're going to see how many units we can cramp onto a single family home lot and then we're going to go okay we can put another unit in there if we don't give everyone a parking spot and make more money 
Like in general, I don't think this building should be built if you don't have enough parking spaces for at least each unit because the lot is too small then for that amount of people. Teresa? Yes? Did anybody ever look and like I said, uh, Ferris says he lived around here. I don't know where he lived. I don't think he lived near here. Like he might've lived on Carling somewhere, but I mean, you come running here and you jog and whatever. So us as owners of properties that own the properties and take care of our properties and we pay our taxes and stuff like that. Everybody knows we're already dealing with an issue of what's on Penny and what's on Michelle because what was shoved there. And the problem we're having right now is we're getting, we're actually having to deal with where everybody says speed ears and stuff like that. It's not the people that own the premises around here. It's the people that live over there that actually come down and use this, like Wayne says, as a straightaway. And when we say they're doing 100 kilometers, they're doing 100 kilometers. Now you're going to put affordable housing. I don't care how you put it. It's going to be affordable housing, which is low income again. We're putting in the same demographic of people into an area on our street, which we're, we're trying to say that we really would wish that it would go somewhere else because Ottawa is big. There's Barhaven. There's a lot of other places that could actually use this instead of having to put it all into one area, which is us. And it's really at a point where it's not fair because like I said, we're fighting on Michelle. It doesn't matter what time of day, like I said, in the winter time, you come any time of day. And if you don't, if you don't even come close to getting hit trying to go on Michelle, because people that are parking there, well, as the plows keep coming, those cars keep coming, basically it comes down to a one lane uh, road at one point. So, Anybody that knows the area knows that the demographics and the infrastructure is not really set up to set up for another 20 unit uh, coming on the street. The area really cannot take that uh, impact. Okay, you're talking about these 20 units and assuming um, that, uh, okay, there's, okay, 15 cars. They're not going to be going on the street. They're, they're coming into the building off of Carling. They're not driving up and down the street. It's, but it's they're not going to be coming like, just on Carling. They're going to be coming. What if they're on Richmond? Like I said, I drive here daily for my job because I, I work throughout Ottawa. And for me to build something like that is very simple because I know how to build. So the problem we're having is not just that. It's the fact that adding more people, adding their visitors, adding other people, it's the area that cannot take the impact because we're already fighting like Wayne says, trying to get off onto Carling to turn. These people, when they leave, if they're going to uh, Barhaven, well, why take Carling when they can come up and go Michelle, take on to Rick on to uh, get onto Richmond and head up that way? Everybody uses different means of trying to get out of it. It's all egress is to get onto different roads. Okay. So every okay. area, we just can't take this uh, anymore. That's the problem. Well, um, there's one thing that's going on right now, and that's intensification. So there's going to be more people within the urban area throughout Ottawa. That's going to be everywhere. Um, that that is what's coming forward. So this is um, fairly small compared to what's going to happen on the arterial arterial roads like Carling, because um, there's um, projects that are going to be much bigger coming. Uh, not necessarily here. Not I'm not saying that, but um, but there will be more people. There will be more people um, in the urban area. Uh, council voted on trying to have 60% of the growth in the city within the urban area. That is where it's already people existing. So that we because the alternative is more sprawl, more 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 uh, bigger Ottawa more houses out. And that's what's going on. Um, frankly, this is quite minor um, in terms of the number of people. Um, a lot of the, the uh, bigger projects are, are very, very large, like 30 story buildings and, and things like that. Um, this one is um, close to a corner. This is one that's uh, relatively small. Um, it's different for you um, because anything that's new is obviously going to have an impact. It feels, feels different. But, um, but that is the trend across the city. And um, that is the goals of the city because we've already made that decision that um, there's going to be more people within the urban area. So, so this is just part of it. 
A well, what, about, what about what about infrastructure am. on our street then? Like we said about not being able to cross at Carling Avenue, is mm -hmm. uh, like that that tipping point has already been tipped. Like this isn't yeah. the one that this is just giving it a, a kind of a form it, that, for that's pre-existing. Okay. Carling Avenue about, is what you're talking about. You're yeah, talking it about is horrible stuff. with Tim Hortons and Brian even said about cars coming down uh, Grannon from Richmond Road. They're coming down that way right now to go to Tim Hortons. Mm -hmm. And then we have the problem of, uh, well, I wouldn't say it's a problem, but of large trucks, they come in, they get their Tim Hortons, and they think there's an exit at the end of Roseview. And then they drive up Roseview. And then they mm -hmm. have to turn around and then drive back. It's just, I think for the infrastructure on our street and how our street is laid out, that it's just beyond the breaking point to add 20 more units. And across the street with the uh, family center, how many people live in there? Like, uh, I don't know how many beds are in there, but at any one time, I bet you, you know, what could it be? Uh, I can't even guess because it's a huge building. So we have okay. all but, these but people. The, but that already exists. That's yes, yes, new. yes. It's been there for, for and a it, long it time. And it has caused problems, but you're adding to it in the sense is you're concentrating people, especially right at the end of the street where there's no lights and there's no sidewalks. And that's basically it. You're, you're concentrating it near the arterial road, which means that there's more access. It's closer to the transit. It's closer to services such as, you know, whatever, drugstores. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I understand that. that it's that great makes I, more sense. why they're doing it that yeah, way. I could understand if, you, if, if they came here and put a project right at the end of Roseview on the far south end, that um, you could make those claims, but they're not. They're talking about having it right near Carlin. Okay, can I add a comment? Yeah. Um, obviously, it's not going to affect me personally because I'm up the street from that. But how about the houses around this four story building? All of a sudden, their privacy is gone. There's going to be four stories looking over their backyards, their front yards. It's, it's, you know, there, there's been single family homes, bungalows and two stories for all these years. And now all of a sudden there's going to be this four story unit that, like I said, is towering over everything. And there's a lack of privacy now. Like I said, it's not going to affect me personally, but certainly the people around it. Yep. And we did. That's why we put hand notices in people's mailboxes so they would know about this meeting and be able to ask those questions if they had those concerns because I've had previous meetings uh, for projects where people either back onto the property or beside it so that they have that opportunity. And generally speaking, um, developments work with those people to ensure that they have their privacy, for example, you know, make sure the hedge stays, is in, stays in place, like if there's a cedar hedge, keep it in place, that kind of stuff. So, um, so that's generally what happens. I yeah, see there's a but, large one. I'm looking I mean, at, the cedar uh, hedge, I understand that'll maybe do one, maybe two, two floors worth, but the, the top two floors, I mean, you'd have to have a mighty big cedar hedge to, to block that yeah. out. Well, that's, that's something that we have to work with them on. And um, I, I, I take your point because I've, I've heard this before and, and it's, a, it's a concern that comes up. Yeah, and, so, and, okay, thank you. And, and luckily, uh, this property um, is abutting on, you know, a commercial property, which is the Tim Hortons, um, the park, which is on the very back of the property. And then, yeah, you have that one bungalow adjacent to um, 817 Roseview on the south side. But that property only um, essentially goes up to less than, I believe, half of um, uh, 817 Roseview's property. So really, um, it's low impact. And, and keep in mind that the building is roughly about 7.2 uh, meters away from the south property line. Right. So that's uh, give or take between 7.5. 7.5. Mm -hmm. do, do you know your quick conversion map? What is that about 30 feet, 25 feet? But that's still not going to help. I, I understand that there's only one home that actually is going to be abutted to this this unit. You're being four stories up. You're still going to be able to see three houses down the road or, you know, the, the house across the road. You're still going to be above and beyond and be able to 
to be looking into their backyard is my, like I said, it, me personally, it's not going to affect I'm far enough away, but I can't imagine that the homes that are immediately surrounding it are going to be overly impressed with having people on a fourth floor looking down into their backyards when they're maybe having a family gathering or, or something. Yeah, uh, like that's, I said, that's a very it's a valid point. Absolutely. I mean, I, I would hate to have my privacy overlooked and, mm. and whatnot. And, you know, uh, to add to my last point as well, too, um, there's there's setback requirements that will uh, have to make us to let the four story kind of be set back a little bit from the edge. So we're, we're trying to do everything that we can to make sure, you know, we're abiding by the, you know, uh, 20, 25 feet and the, Yeah. Sorry? Okay. We're um we've just got a few minutes left um but um these are these are good questions and um you're you're welcome to ask more if you think of them later we can send them in um uh, nadia uh and ferris do you have a a date yet of when this would this would go to planning committee yes it would now again we haven't submitted our applications yet so um uh once those are submitted the city will circulate um you know the residents um the yeah. application and all the supporting studies and yeah. plans will be on the city's dev apps um and yes it would go to planning committee but there's no date uh yeah. assigned because we haven't submitted anything yet yeah right. okay well, i just want to give people an idea yeah hi just a second Brian. um i just want to give an idea of the process so people know that um what what's what the steps are this is actually a not required meeting i always go out of my way to um, bring uh, developers uh, to to the community before um, anything's done uh, so that you have this opportunity to learn about it um, typically if if i hadn't done this this would just you wouldn't know till a sign went up um, and it would be an official sign from the city and even then you still have pretty good timing because the way it works is the sign goes up saying a zone, uh, that they're looking for uh, an amendment to zoning which means it goes to the planning committee of the city and that is where councillors are sitting on that committee I'm not sitting on it but I go to those meetings and the public gets to go to that meeting as well so the public can go to that meeting and make presentations and concerns I've gone to many of these meetings and you can present what your concerns are. But frankly, it's better to talk ahead of time, to talk right now like you are um, doing with uh, Nadia and Samantha and Ferris to, to learn about what's going on um, and um, maybe fix something that's not um, in stone yet. Um, but um, there, there's, there's opportunities, as well as talking about the street features. That's why I'm here as the counselor. So that's the process. Now I'm positive it's not going to be before September. <laughs> positive. <laughs> because um, August 26 is a massive uh, official planning meeting uh, for planning. Um, so the meetings after that could be, uh, uh, it could be one of those. So but it'll be a few months away. And um, so that's, that's how the process works. And even there, um, after planning committee, then it goes to council. But um, planning committee is the is the time when residents, uh, anyone from the public can come and speak as well. But um, I appreciate though that we're talking at the early study, at the early uh, stages. Um, this, and the city can look at um, uh, some of the issues uh, regards to um, traffic. Um, uh, frankly, um, not so much in, in terms of the development, but as the existing situation, because you're pointing out to something that previously existed concerns about turning left, that kind of thing, or, or parking, or um, issues with speeding. Um, that's something I'm dealing with in a lot of neighborhoods. In terms of reducing the speed on the street, I can make it 30 and, um, and then uh, you know, have, and have different measures in place. So, uh, so that's, that's something we can work on. So uh, I haven't had a chance to talk to people in Andrews in, in Grosby before, so I'm, I appreciate having that opportunity. Um, is there any further questions that? Uh... No, I think every, 
Uh, it's Wayne Donovan, eight six four Rosie. I'm just saying from uh, for uh, Nadia and uh, Ferry's sake is I think the issue is going to be the amount of units and the uh, the amount of parking. Like I think that's what the neighborhood is going to have a big a big problem with. It's just uh, no. I I understand how the future is going, but like this is an old street and there's older people on it and uh, like they don't want any more congestion or any more any more problems with parking. So I think uh, that that's going to be the issue. Parking and traffic flow. Yes, okay. exactly. And like I said, if there is pre-existing conditions about that you have concerns about the speeding, um, please uh, tell me about when you see the speeding happen, when um, this is doubt, you know, when this is a, a particular problem, let me know about the particular parking that exists now. Yeah. So we can work on um, tackling that. Because uh, frankly, I haven't heard from the community before on that. Um, so it's an opportunity to, uh, to look at it. Okay. Um, and I'm, I've worked with, I'm, I've worked with actually about five communities reducing the speed in their neighborhoods. So um, across the ward and, and that's, they have very similar concerns, notwithstanding anything new coming in. Well, actually most neighborhoods are getting infill. So it's like bit by bit. Um, you haven't had that experience. Um, your the rest of the street is uh, R1. So it's not slated for, uh, for any infill or anything else. So that's not gonna happen. It's just this one property that has the ability to, um, to have multiple units. I think that's time. one of the worries with the with people who have been here a long time. Is this going to start a chain reaction where people are going time, to start selling off properties and we're going to, the street that we live on, is it's not going to be the same street. Yeah, We've right, had Teresa, infill on this actually, road already. Teresa, this, this whole area is actually set in, in the, when you look at the zoning, can be set as infills because the way that this, when you look at all our residences and you look at the numbers, it's already been set that we could do infills if we wanted to. Um, well, maybe not from the zoning standpoint, Brian. Well, actually, no, it is because R, I, should, I actually R1, went through, hang on, I went through this zoning, when I built my so property, that, so. Yeah, you can have secondary units, that's about yes. it at this point, which yeah. is anybody can have a secondary no, unit. No, no, that's what I'm saying. So we could do an infill. You could add two, pro two properties to the same, and you can go to zoning, and you can go in front of the committee, and you can even try for three. All depends on who comes to object, object it. Uh, you, so, I don't, know, I don't know what you mean by two or three, but you get to yeah. have a secondary unit. I can have a secondary unit. You can have a secondary unit. Anyone can across the city. That's been there for a long time. If no, I may, counselor, further, but sorry, if I may sorry. counselor, yeah, so a secondary unit um, is could be a basement apartment. It could be a unit above a garage. So that's the terminology I, in the Planning Act is additional residential unit. So um that's um that's permitted as of right across ontario i think i think that's what not what i'm trying to say oh i think what brian is trying to say that is that if you look at our neighbor he's 864 and we're 870 like there is no 866 there is no 868 so two units could fit in between our houses so basically if i reduce if i take this no uh, no I take, but you're zoned r1 and the you'd have to split a unit you'd have to split a lot and you're not zoned to split a lot. Well, they split it you're on not, the uh, R1. That, that you well, don't. It's it's just a single family home. That's what your zoning is. Okay, it's so not. When I, so Teresa, Teresa. Mm -hmm. So when I went and I built my premise, okay, mm -hmm. I was actually I could have gone for my variances and all that, and I could have actually gone to put two premises on my property, and it wouldn't have been an issue, because I went through it already. So. Uh, you had two different well, I, I don't know the specifics of your situation. Um, I don't know what your which which uh, unit are you? Which I'm what's your address? Not hard to find me. I'm the one that has the biggest Zero. house and pays the most tax. It's the big white whale who that uh, <laughs> eight that seven zero or our house. Okay, <laughs> okay. The way it works is you can you 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 can build. Uh, it's R one, and R one means a single family home. And you can have a secondary unit. Anyone can, as Nadia is talking about. I already um, knew that. You, you, you can do that. Yeah. 
That's it. But but I think but I think what but Brian if you're talking to... about um, knocking down a house and building two semis, you can't. No, no, but you could you could subdivide a property into three different lots. You're talking about severing a lot. Yes, that could be right. done. That could be done. It could be done into three. So that that's where Brian Only is talking about. Large lot. Add. But so, um, anyway, it's not likely to happen. It's very. It's not likely to happen. And uh, we're not dealing with that right now. They said but, Trump yeah. wouldn't be president, and that happened. They said it wasn't likely. <laughs> so I don't know. I after that, okay. I believe anything well, can happen. Okay, follow the official plan, <laughs> and you'll see what the measures they put in. Uh, I won't make predictions, but anyway, so, just, at just this wanna, point, we're, we're talking about, about the property. Right. We're talking about this property right now. Uh, yeah, just so. running this up the flagpole quick before we leave. Would a, would a traffic light be out of the question on Carling Avenue? Well, um, I'm looking, you know, it crosses my mind um, and it depends on whether they think it's too close to the other one at Scribbins. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the, the issue. problem. It's too bad that's they the couldn't problem. divert, like, like an, uh, divert the road just, over the, into the uh, Rexall parking lot or whatever. Yeah, you to can't better better create a create a, an openness at Scriven so people can turn left on Carling from there. And again, I'm just running something up. Uh, but what is the reason they have the uh, the median up where Grennan crosses to Rich, Richie Street? I don't know. Because you could know. make a if they ha they have lights there, and if that was open, I know you could yeah. make a left hand turn during rush hour. It's a good question. It just, um, uh, yeah, well, probably because the people on Greenwich didn't want to, the traffic on, and that's a long time ago because it's been there for. Yeah, uh, it's been there as long as I can remember. I'm yeah. just uh, curious. Yeah, but um, I think it's not like you can't get a light at Roseview. Um, it's too close to Scrivens. It's just one block away. Um, and having uh, worked on asking about these things in the past i know they have a certain distance they well have to it would be better if it was a, a few blocks away because the problem with the light there let's say you turn right and then you want to make a left to a u u-turn you still can't do it because of the traffic yeah, yeah. so so we're talking about traffic and yeah. i i'm going to draw this to an end because um and please send in your concerns and i can have traffic look at different specific concerns but um anyway um but uh I appreciate you came out tonight. I appreciate you care about your community. You, you care about your neighbors and you care about what happens. So um, that, that's, that says a lot. And uh, I want to thank you for coming out. I want to thank you, Ferris, and for answering the questions and Samantha and Nadia. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, thanks for having us, guys. We're, uh, and thanks uh, to the councillor and to her office as well for, for putting this together. You know, we're, um, we're definitely wanting to work with the community ensuring that we're going to minimize the impact of, of um, this whole process and, and moving on forward. So thanks everybody for showing up and uh, we're definitely going to go, uh, go take your feedback into account and see what, what other options we can kind of create from it. There's a quick question. Can you make them into condos instead of into rentals? I, uh, I mean, I guess that's 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 uh, a possible option. I guess you're wanting to attract I want ownership. Traffic? Is that I, want, own, I want ownership where people take pride in the area. The problem we have right now, and that's what I said, it wasn't security. I mean, we're care we're, we're we're concerned about the safety for our kids and all that, but okay. it's basically ownership where people actually take pride, and we don't have to deal with people like that are on penny that have no pride that basically we have to endure this. We're looking to make sure people have pride and ownership. That's what we're looking at. Just so you know, um, Brian, um, it's totally up to um, the builder to have it as rental or as um, a, a condo. And by the way, that's the same for your property. You can rent your house out. I can't stop you from renting your house out or anyone on your street. So it's the same, it's the same uh, philosophy. No. Um, they're building more rental because there's a shortage of rental and that's why they're building it. People are desperate for rental. And, uh, so that's where the market is going right now. So there, um, Teresa, you just brought, you just brought it up. If you go to the corner of Michelle and Roseview, there's a rental right there. Look how much pride that person has in the house, right on the corner of Michelle and, uh, right you just made me. the point. You just made the point that, um, having a single family home doesn't necessarily mean it's, it's a uh, rental. It's the rentals. Yeah. Oh, anyway, it's not going to 
anyway, th these guys um, are probably going to do rental because frankly, every single developer that's come through the door um, in Ottawa these days, it's rental. It's very rare they do condos now because people want rental. And yeah. that's, what, that's what the market's doing. Absolutely. And look, in, in regards to pride of ownership, it's going to come, it's going to come down to me as the owner to ensure that tenants are respecting um, the units, respecting the community. And if they're not, I'm going to have to just do something about it. I mean, being a new building, you know, it's not cheap to build something like this, right? Like there's, it's, there's a lot that goes into it. For, forget about the, you know, the fisc, the, the monetary resources, but we also take pride in our, our assets and we want to make sure that we're attracting the right people. That's what's going to come down to improper management. Sorry, my friend, just one more question because I just remembered something I was thinking about. And uh, I apologize. I don't know a lot about rentals or anything like that. So if it sounds out of the blue, though, garbage pickup, is that going to be for the city is going to pick up garbage there? Or will you have a bin there for the residents? So we strategically uh, put the uh, garbage in the door uh, for the garbage on the side of the building so that we'll have a private uh, garbage contractor being able to pull into the property, unload, and then put it back in and then move out instead of having uh, a bunch of garbage on the street there. Okay, moving. awesome. That was that was my my concern of like a one Good. lot with 20 units uh, putting their garbage out every uh, Wednesday night or whatever. No. Good question to end with. Thank you very much, Wayne. And thank you everyone for coming out. And like I said, if you have any further questions, uh, please let us know. Okay. Take care. Enjoy the rest of your thank evening. You. Okay. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye. 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 Bye.